talk uh, video games. Yeah, some more, I think, interest. You know, FTX is fun to follow, but there's less investing implications there. Uh, yeah, so the NPD group updated their video game, video game results for the month of November. Total sales were up 3% year over year, reversing declines that had happened throughout the year. Uh, so we're kind of seeing a reversal in the trend there. And the sales were really driven by a 45% increase in hardware sales. And hardware sales mean console sales. Uh, this was led by the PS5. Um, I should note, though, I checked before we recorded this, the PS5 is still by invitation only on Amazon right now. So I, I don't even think they fully have reached equilibrium on supply and demand yet. But we'll see if that ever happens over the next couple of months. Um, now, if we look at the full year after this giant increase in PS5 supply, uh, this year, the PS5 now leads in dollar sales for the US and the Switch leads in unit sales and the Xbox always plays kind of third place there. Um, COD, Call of Duty, is now the best seller year to date. So that game really contributed to getting growth back uh, the last two months because the the launch of that it's the biggest game of the year every year and this one did really well on top of that the European news came out and basically confirmed this uh, Nintendo Switch is still number one in Europe and yeah all the top games were the same so again Europe, I don't need to go through the exact Europe numbers because it's kind of all the same there but again America and Europe are pretty in line uh let me see what the questions were that i had do you think so we saw a decline in gaming revenue throughout 2022 and yeah yeah november's just one month so i guess we have to confirm it over the next few months here but was the decline in gaming revenue this year all chalked up to these hardware limitations and how do we think it'll affect the industry in 2023 no would be my answer i think People generally have less free time this year relative to like stay at home period. Because that was still last year, right? At this time last year, there was still, or at least this during 2022 relative to 2021, a lot of people were still staying at home. You really think that has an impact? I think that. A big impact? Yeah. Time spent. Really? Yeah. 100%. Hundred percent. Well, if that correlated, then the revenue would be down like thirty percent. So I don't think it has that big of an impact. And maybe on well, the not margin. All, not all of it's. Yeah, I think it has an impact on in-game sales. And yeah. not all. Not all the revenue in the industry is in-game sales. Majority's not, or probably half and half now at this point. Uh, yeah. I think the majority as, as though a, is as a shareholder of EA and Take Two and Nintendo, I would love to say that it's all like hardware pitfalls, but there was an like, especially a, a, among people that couldn't go to school, there was an unreal amount of engagement. Yeah, especially for the kids. Yeah, I still think the majority though is the hardware limitations, because if you don't get the hardware, you're not going to buy the game. So it's a double whammy, really, on industry spending. Um, but again, uh, in this month, there was some big launches. I guess Call of Duty was in October, so it's not as big. But there was that that God of War game, a Sony game that did really well, and then the Pokemon games, which probably gave it a bit of an artificial boost. Um, but they are comping back to the holiday season last year, which definitely had some huge game launches as well. So I think we'll see, but. I would I how do you think it affects the industry in 2023 if this is a sign that the console or the hardware shortages are over? Yeah, I mean if if they start meeting demand, uh, I think it's business as usual for a lot of the gaming companies back to probably what you saw through 2018 to 2020 period. Or maybe not even maybe you mean the last two, the last two, three decades, just steady growth. I would say it looks a lot like the years prior to the Switch launch. Oh, at least for at least for the Xbox and play. Eh, I'm not even sure. The Switch I don't even think that that much of an effect. Yeah, the, I think. Yeah, I agree. It's just so unique. The I don't know. Yeah, 
obviously if they can meet demand, they're going to sell more units. If they sell more units, they're going to sell more games. Yeah, I think. But that's it, that's not as prominent. The game sales that are in conjunction with the hardware sales anymore. No, but it's you. You have to. Uh, well, you don't buy it in tandem, but if you have a console, no one's buying a console and just going, I got a console. All right, here it is. You have to buy, you're going to buy three or four games. No, but you. you uh, and if you don't have the console, you're not going to buy them. Yeah, but people aren't, wa- people that haven't been able to get the Xbox Series S or X aren't waiting to get caught. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not like backwards compatible when you get this next next chance yeah it's not going to, it's no one's not playing games but i think there's definitely a delay because if you buy the one that's for the old uh hardware you're not getting the the, the best graphics so if you're saying okay i can buy this and wait three months for this new souped up whatever the next generation i think it's it's going to be a positive um but yeah. console isn't even that big of a part of the industry anymore mobile is more important i think though what's interesting is that there was calls this summer that the gaming industry was cyclical now and maybe this is a head fake again it could be head fake but it, it, the revenues declined like one percent year over year or like five percent year over year for a few months and now we're getting back to growth so i think that uh short lived could cycle. be pro- yeah it could be proved as a short-lived cycle there um, here's another positive I saw is that Microsoft is officially raising the standard price for its premium title. So $70 a piece. Uh, a lot of other companies have started to uh, do this over the last few years where I think the majority are now, um, take two EA, EA is launching at $70 with their new premium star Wars game. Six, uh, for the last, since 20 or not 20, uh, 2006, the game whatever you know the premium title that you pay not 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 in-game purchases we're not talking about that the actual game you buy has been around 60 dollars. so it's underperformed the cost of a game is underperformed inflation any thoughts on here because i think for a lot of these premium titles there's going to be once that 60 dollars barrier got broken i think there's going to be a lot more flexibility where you'll have maybe some game will stay at 60 70 bucks if it's not something that company is willing to bet people are going to pay up for but for a big game that someone takes five years to make i think there's going to be room to even go past this because if you play if you buy if a a consumer buys a one of these titles that you play for months and months and months that you spend 100 hours in over a course of a year say one of the blizzard type games like the you know the new diablo that's going to come out or red dead redemption and grand theft auto one of those star wars games maybe from respawn um, there's lots of others I'm missing. The difference in value, like the price per hour of entertainment you're paying for when you have, a, say, a $70 game versus a $100 game is not that big of a difference. I just think there's going to be tons of pricing power there because when you have those top brands, I don't think there's going to be incremental losses in sales given how much people spend on this comp- compared to like a movie or something like that. Yes. Okay, maybe with like the apps, maybe with COD, let's say. But I would think it would go the other direction. That if game, especially if like cloud gaming becomes more commonplace, that you'd want to lower your prices so you if so that you can get more people in game to spend on in game content. I always thought that the industry was kind of heading the other way. Yeah, it had, I think Fortnite really threw a wrench into it, right? Over when that happened, they gave, I think a lot of the established publishers said we wanted to release stuff for free. Uh, and EA even mentioned once that they were going to give up on all these premium games and kind of go the, the in-game live services route, which has been their big growth driver. But when they launched that old, what was it, Star Wars Fallen Order or something like that, that was is the prequel to the one that they're about to launch here, it reconvinced them that there's still a market for these single player games. So I think it's two different, I guess it's two different categories where you have these single player ones that aren't maybe as live service-y, services-y, it's not as social. I think there's plenty of pricing power there. Uh, 
and it's a huge difference if you have 10 million customers paying 70 bucks that's 700 million 10 million uh 700 million revenue i think and then if you have 10 million paying 100 bucks that's 1 billion in revenue but yeah i think there's definitely two sides of the market where you have something like the sports games which might actually benefit from going free just because they make all the money on the the live services so yeah yeah it, it always has blown my mind that game costs just really haven't changed i mean they it shows become, how good uh, become more profitable yeah over the years thanks to digital distribution but they they're still the same top line or same same price tag although at the same time i'm seeing a lot more like yeah, the standard game is $60, but you can get the ultimate edition for $150 plus a couple of in-game packs kind of thing with like, I don't know. It feels like there's more iterations of existing games now. The yeah, game I, average I, price has probably gone up. Yeah, I wonder how many people take advantage of those uh, if they're the core the core customer. All right, All right. enough gaming. Uh, it seems like industry is kind of doing as it does. Uh, Let's do some, some quick hitters here. 